Hello there girls and boys and welcome back to the channel. As you might have heard, Logic has been upgraded to Logic Pro 11 and it's coming with a plethora of different new features. Some of them are AI based. And as I've been digging around the YouTube, I have found several people misunderstanding the use of these tools. And I gotta tell you, if you know what you're doing, those guys are gonna be extremely useful for those of you who are producing music at a much more professional level, or even for those of you who are getting started with this whole concept. The only thing is this, it's quite, quite reliant on your understanding of music theory. So if you didn't have enough reasons for spending a few hours of your day learning music theory, well, you got yet another one. So with that being said, let's get into it. But before we go, if this is your first time in the channel, I welcome you because in here I show you every single thing I do in order to create, write, produce, and of course perform my music live. Because I know that making a living as a musician is not a dream, it's a possibility. And if I can do it, of course you can do it. With that being said, let's get into it. What you're about to see is an excerpt from a live stream on which you can see me using these new features added to Logic Pro 11 to produce a track from the scratch. So if you want to get the most information and entertainment out of this once this video is over i recommend you to watch that live stream which the link could be and should be found somewhere on the screen for this exercise i decided to write a, a guitar driven piece and being the prog rocker that, that i am i couldn't help myself and i began adding time signature changes like they were going out of fashion and uh, it's going to be actually good because it's going to help you to see how effective and efficient the new performers are when it comes to following uh, extreme time center changes and a little bit more of an advanced uh, use of uh, music theory. So let's see the first example. <laughs> I decided to turn on the click track uh, for you to not only for you to see the time signature changes, but also because I want you to see how important uh, the layout of a track before beginning any form of production is. This is important because we're going to be using the newer newest version of Drummer, and Drummer actually uh, it's a for those of you who don't know, a Drummer is a virtual uh, drummer. You're going to go to uh, over here. You're going to create. Look at that, this is actually different. We're going to select Session Player. We're going to select Drummer. This is actually quite cool because you have a collection of different ways on which the AI-based drummer is going to perform. Depending on which kind of uh, uh, acoustic drummer you're looking for, you're going to get a particular reaction or a particular interpretation of what the drummer should do, allegedly. Since this is kind of um, prog rock, uh, let's try retro, because showing my age. There is, look at that! Alec so, let me introduce you to this. I'm going to just uh, manipulate uh, the complexity, and please keep an eye open for this guy. See what's going to happen. Okay, I'm going to decrease the, the, the complexity. Okay, what does that, does that mean? Those tiny... Uh, kind of blips on the yellow region represent the hits and the performance of the of the drummer. Now, pay attention to this. You will see that the drummer is going to change its behavior and is going to be fitting to the click. Here is going to be playing at 7 eighths and then 9 eighths. Pay attention to it. <laughs> Cool, right? Whoa. Yeah, it's mind blowing. If you're used to the sound coming out of Logic Pro X drummer, this would be the first thing that you notice, right? The sound of the drums uh, are, it's way better. It sounds much more punchier, much more uh, hi-fi if you wish. And of course the drummer itself, it's much human-like if you know what I mean. One of the many features that uh, this new update has to offer as well is that we finally can operate drummer to its fullest potential because it's fully customizable even to the point that you can even use uh, midi to control the drummer regions without having to turn them into midi that gives you the best of both worlds look at this if you just press the letter p which stands for paper 
Alakablam! Hmm. It's still a drama region, but I have access to the MIDI. This is badass. Look at this. <laughs> so that what happens? This means that you can actually, and by the way, if you, if we go back to this, first, this means that you can actually use the drummer to give you some form of a, a starting point, and then you can go there nitty gritty and still take advantage of the drummer features. Insane. That's excellent. actually good. Well That's done. Excellent. And one more thing, and this is something that, well, it should have been there since the beginning. You can now program double bass drum, so it plays metal. Then, if you go to the environment once again, here, manual, since you have control over the kick drum, this means one thing. <laughs> we finally can play metal! Okay. Yes! Yes! <laughs> we can finally program double bass drum! Oh, it worked! Yeah, <laughs> thank is. you. Yes! <laughs> Yes, Queen. I gotta tell you as well that this version of Drummer is capable of controlling external drum libraries. For example, some, something coming out of contact. And for as long as you set the internal input of contact to follow the general MIDI format, you're gonna be basically rocking completely without any form of uh, mistreatings. Moving on. I'm gonna introduce you to one thing that it's not a new development, but it's extremely stupid important and you can bring me back. And it's something that nobody does, or very few does, and they should, which is using the arrangement tools. The arrangement timeline has been part of Logic since forever, but now with the added features such as the chord progression timeline, and also how that impacts the performance of the session players, they become a much more useful feature. You will see that as soon as you create a new session player track, the entire song is going to be populated with regions following the structure that you established in the arrangement timeline. And also comes with the added benefit of you being able to copy those uh, arrangements and pasting them further down the line, allowing you to bring the entirety of the chord progression, time signature changes, and regions to that point in, in the timeline without any extra hiccups. Very useful. Now the newest development in Logic Pro, which is actually fantastic. The chord area. If you click here, it's gonna ask you for a chord. Why would you need to do such a thing? The newest addition to it is not drummer. Drummer is just an improvement upon what it used to be. A great one at that. Yeah, it's actually excellent. The newest addition actually is bass player and keyboard player. Why is that important? I'm gonna keep it in C, major then I'm gonna ask for the creation of a, ba a bass player. Why not? Why not? We got a similar looking interface, but you can tell that the, the, the tiny elements here are way different because these are now representing notes played on a bass. Double clicking it or E on the keyboard will bring back the controls. All of the session musicians or session performers that are part of Logic are all controlled using a very similar layout. The difference lies on, of course, in the case of the drums, it, you're controlling the different uh, sections of the drum kit that are being used as part of the rhythm that you're performing. But in the bass, for example, you can tell how low or which is the lowest uh, note that the bass player is gonna play, which, if you know what I mean, it will allow you to tell the bass player that it's playing a regular four string bass or a drop tuned six string. It's that badass. And more press play. Beautiful. Yeah, totally in tune, right? No, of course not, it sucked. Coming back to the chords. The first chord, it's playing a G. It's on G, where's my G? G, uh, G sharp, of course. Damn it, I'm gonna do it with my keyboard. G sharp, G sharp, minor seven. Where is my minor, 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 minor seven? Thank you very much, look at that. Now let's take a look at the freaking bass. Huh. Now it fits. 
The Quartz feature is extremely, extremely powerful because it allows you to lay out the mapping of the entire song structure on the timeline. And all of the different uh, performers, I'm talking about the keyboard and the bass player, will adapt their performance to that chord progression automatically, for real. And as you can see, it's quite comprehensive. The amount of customization to those chords is quite, quite big, but it relies quite heavily on the understanding of music theory. So if you truly want to get the best out of it, you truly have to know some and learn some music theory yourself. And the same what happens with drummer. You can modify the performances of the keyboard player and the bass player through the use of MIDI without having to turn the drummer, or in this case, the performance regions into MIDI. Now, briefly, I'm gonna show you this guy, Chroma Glow, which is one of the extremely fun first new, new options to Logic. Chroma Glow, it's being heavily promoted by Apple as one of the best things that this new update has to offer. And in a nutshell, it's basically speaking a saturation plugin. But I gotta tell you, after working around with it for a few hours now, I can tell you that it's extremely, extremely interesting. I am planning on releasing a video just devoted to it next week. So stay tuned for that one, because on that one, I'm not gonna only show you how it sounds, but also how to use it and get the most out of it. But stay tuned for that one. Now let's bring the next and final stage of this performance of this live stream, which is the keyboard player. So if we go down here, I'm going to press on add, create a, a keyboard player. Thank you very much. And let's make sure that it's going to be outputted to you. Bada bam, there it is. And look at that. Automatically is populating the entirety of the track following my chord progression. And Thanks. When it comes to the keyboard performer, you got control over both of the hands of the fake keyboard player. That allows you to tell what kind of notes are going to be played with the right hand and which kind of notes are going to be played with the left. It also allows you to position each hand across the entirety of the octaves of the keyboard. <laughs> Introducing the Alpha Juno 2 from the Dark Age of Technology, also known as the Ace. And the same way happens with drummer, you can use the keyboard player to control an external instrument. And in this case, I'm going to be actually controlling an analog synthesizer from the 80s through the use of MIDI. And this is also bringing us to another feature added to Logic Pro 11, which is internal MIDI, which in simple terms allows you to send MIDI signal from one channel to another. And in this example, I created an external MIDI track, which will allow me to control the Alpha Juno, and I routed the internal MIDI to be the coming from the performance out of the keyboard player. See what happens. Let's create a new track. I'm gonna click here. We're gonna go to MIDI, external MIDI, thank you. Audio input, yes, thank you very much. We're gonna be using uh, five, three. And output, you're gonna go to some. And MIDI destination, Mio or Mayo. And channel one because totally didn't do my homework. Alec But And if everything is working according to the plan... By the way, if you happen to like this kind of content, please let us know by clicking the like button underneath. Let's continue. I want my uh, keyboard or the MIDI track to be performed by the, the piano player, the keyboard player on Logic. You can simply just turn these uh, regions into MIDI and then drop it on top of my MIDI track. But that's so 2023. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the current year. So we are going to introduce you to the inspector. And over here we got, look, this is new. Internal MIDI in. I wonder what that means. Let's turn it on. Oh, input, instrument input. Which one would I choose? Oh, classic analog. Check this out. The piano performer is actually controlling the Alpha Juno from the 80s. Yes, and actually you can do that with any MIDI enabled device. 
And last but not least, now they finally added a way to bounce in place external instruments. And that means that you can finally print the track coming out of your analog synthesizer and make sure that latency is compensated in the way in. That makes a huge, huge difference from someone like me who happens to work quite extensively with analog synthesizers through MIDI. And it doesn't stop there because you can now as well bounce in place any track that has an I.O. plugin inserted. Very cool. But look at this. I want to record this. Before, I had to open a freaking new channel, go into my uh, audio settings and change the buffer size to a lower buffer size. Why? Because I will have to record the inputs of my uh, uh, keyboard coming into Logic, right? And a lower uh, buffer size means less latency. Why am I saying this? The problem is that if you want to record a live instrument, that latency is going to make extremely hard for the performer to be on tempo and secondly it's gonna be it's gonna all of the recordings all of the real life recordings are gonna be off in tempo by the latency itself if i record it as it is there is gonna be I, we will hear it coming in correctly but we're gonna get a delayed by uh let's see i will tell you right now signal a, a, a signal that is delayed uh, by 23, no, 47 milliseconds, which is quite, quite a big a chunk of delay. But what if I tell you that Logic finally uh, got a solution to it? Introducing bouncing place. Ooh, that's new. No, that's not new. <laughs> but what is new is that now you can do it with instruments. <laughs> let's, uh, I don't, uh, yeah, audio tail and let's do it. Look at this. Look. Uh, look. It tracked it and it's set to tempo. So there you have it, girls and boys. Logic Pro 11, it's extremely, extremely expensive. I think this is worth the hype. Uh, but again, as I said in the beginning of this video, it requires you, when it comes to the use of the chords, to be quite, quite aware of music theory. Uh, and the more you know, the more you will get out of this feature. You can't believe how many videos I have seen of people uh, just uh, throwing this new feature away because, uh, without trying to be disrespectful, but because they don't understand what they have in front of them. So please, please don't be discouraged for these comments. Do your own research. And for real, if I uh, ever had the chance to tell you how important learning and understanding music theory is, now you got a good example on why you should truly put some effort on it. If you like to support this kind of content, the best way to do it is by listening to music on Apple Music or Spotify, and also by following us on social media such as Instagram and X, because that's the best way for you to get in touch with us in a much more personal basis. Now, girls and boys, as every single time that I meet you, I gotta remind you that you should never let anybody tell you what to dream about. Remember that I will see you when I see you.